Um, Mohamed already said a lot of things on uh, uh, some of the studies uh, the IFM was able to do for the newly diagnosed elderly patients with myeloma. So I have a relatively short presentation. So these are my disclosures. And uh, I, I will get started with some uh, very general consideration of epidemiology and frailty. Uh, just to say, as we, as we all know, myeloma is a disease of the elderly, so the median age at the time of diagnosis is approximately 70 years. Uh, one third of patients have an age over 75, uh, and uh, approximately 10% of patients have an age over 85. Uh, what is shown on the left hand side is not myeloma, so this is the world population. Uh, showing that uh, we will get more and more people over the age of 65, so the, the young people in the room uh, will have to treat uh, more and more uh, myeloma patients in the next uh, few years. So uh, that said, and uh, I think this slide is, is important, so this, uh, this is a real-life study. Uh, this is, in fact, the Australian registry and uh, showing uh, accumulative lengths of therapy according to age. Uh, patients are below the age of 70, patients over the age of 70. And as you can appreciate, the, of course, the majority of patients, but not all of them, receive first line, but uh, not so many patients receive second line and third line. So, you, and if you look at patients over the age of 70, 89% uh, of patients got first line, but only uh, 35 got second line, 17% of patients got third line. So, my point is just to say that the attrition rate between uh, first line and second line of the third line is, is quite significant. I would say it's huge. And this is real life again, but Australia is a, is a good country. It's a rich country with a good drug access. So, uh, and, and it has been shown also in other studies we, we did in Europe. So this is, a, this is something important. It, it basically says that we need uh, to use the first line, the, the first line treatment has to be optimal. Uh, so use your best treatment first and try to try to keep patients on track, try to keep going with, with regimens. So basically we need uh, effective, safe, well-tolerated regimens uh, for all myeloma patients, but especially for the elderly. So uh, frailty uh, uh, is something important. And uh, uh, the IFM and, and several other groups, in fact, develop frailty scores. So uh, the, the original frailty score was developed by Dr. Palumbo from Italy, uh, which is called the IMWG frailty score. Uh, German colleagues uh, developed another score. Uh, you will find a score at Mayo Clinic. You will, uh, uh, we will see uh, soon a score from the UK. So this is the IFM score, uh, looking at very simple things, in fact, age, comorbidities, and ECOG. And basically, uh, this is based on the study we call the first study. So this is based on approximately 1,600 patients. And the PFS is shown on the left-hand side, and the survival is shown on the right-hand side. And, uh, and if you, as you can see, the, the, the yellow curve stands for uh, non-frail patients, and the median survival is approximately 70 months. Uh, in contrast, the, the frail patients have a median survival of approximately 40 months. So again, it's, it's, I, I, I am not saying that this score is best. This is one of the several, one of the many scores we have today, but it, it basically shows that there is a lot of interest in uh, assessment of frailty. And in fact, in the future, you will see studies for frail patients and you will also see studies for elderly non-frail patients. And for example, this is a study we, we will start um, in the next uh, following months. So centers have uh, already opened in some, uh, in some part of, of the country. And so this is a study designed for the frail elderly, newly diagnosed patients with myeloma. This is a dexamethasone sparing study. And, and basically what is shown is that the control arm is lenalidomide and low dose dexamethasone. The investigational arm is lenalidomide in, in combination with subcutaneous daratumumab and very few dexamethasone. In, uh, because of time, I will not show you studies for non-frail, but you have several studies uh, across Europe investigating fit elderly patients with a more, uh, more, you may say, more effective or three drug, even four drug combination regimens. So uh, moving forward with uh, uh, strengths of care, uh, those, these are ESMO guidelines 2017 for the transport ineligible patients. And as you can see, the first option is, is considered to be either bortezomib in combination with malfalanprenidone, lenalidomide, in combination with low-dose dexamethasone 
on the VRD or RVD regimen. So basically the combination of lenalidomide and bortezomib on the examitazone. And as you can see, uh, second option or third options, uh, other options may, may be either based on teridomide or based on vanamustine or uh, all in some countries, unfortunately, only uh, this kind of very old and traditional MT regimen. So going back to, to, to what we did in the past, and uh, so this was the very, this was the first study the IFM did for uh, elderly patient with newly diagnosed myeloma. So the, uh, in fact, so the, the young people in the room, well, uh, maybe they do not realize that uh, we, 15 years ago, something like that, we treated patients with hydroxyamethasone alone, uh, also in the frontline setting. So this study investigated uh, several dexamethasone regimens. So some patients got dexamethasone alone, some patients got dexamethasone in combination with interferon alpha, for example. Uh, some patients got melphalan-prenizone or melphalan-dexamethasone. And at the end of this study, in fact, the melphalan-prenizone remain a standard of care for uh, elderly patients with malware. Then, uh, as said by Mohamed, we, we decided to investigate tadidomide. As you know, tadidomide first uh, emerged in, in the field of myeloma in December 1998 due to Bart Balogi, who, who was the, the key investigator for, for tadidomide and many other things in myeloma as well. So the IFM did a study uh, uh, doing this comparison with the in combination with tadidomide, and we had also a third arm which was a kind of transplant arm. And then at the end of the day, we, uh, because many thalidomide studies had been done across Europe, we did a meta-analysis uh, showing that MP in combination with thalidomide was a better regimen as compared to alpha-prednisone alone. So uh, I said by Mohamed, this was something, this was a good, uh, this was something nice for IFM. So this was October 2007, so 12 years ago. Uh, the Lancet say that uh, the combination of thalidomide with melphalan was a new standard of care for elderly patients with multiple myeloma. Then, uh, at this time, we got other new agents, and especially uh, bortezomib and then lenalidomide. And uh, the IFM was not uh, uh, extremely committed or as, extremely involved in the in bortezomib studies. So the VISTA study established. Uh, bortezomib melphalan prednisone as a new standard of care. And then we got other uh, bortezomib regimens having a subcutaneous bortezomib, having weekly bortezomib. So this is a true, it has been a true and, and, and important standard of care for many patients across many countries. And the IFM, in fact, uh, looked at lenalidomide on low-dose dexamethasone. This was initially based on, the, on a study uh, done in the US, an ECOG study. Uh, this ECOG study uh, combined lenalidomide on, with either high-dose dexamethasone or low-dose dexamethasone and showed the benefit of low-dose dexamethasone. And at that time, we, we had already established mp thalidomide as a new sort of care. So basically, we say the study was very simple. In fact, it was MPT uh, compared with uh, either lenalidomide, low-dose dexamethasone for 18 cycles or delivered as a continuous regimen. So this study was uh, published, was part of ASH plenary session in 2013 and was published in the New England Journal of Medicine in 2014. And the final analysis was published uh, last year. And the study clearly established continuous lenalidomide and dexamethasone as a standard of care for these patients. So the median PFS uh, was uh, 26 months for lenalidomide and, and low-dose dexamethasone versus approximately 21 months for the two other arms. And in terms of survival, in fact, if you want to, to make the story short, the median survival for MPT was approximately four years, and it was approximately five years for those patients who got lenalidomide and low-dose dexamethasone. So this uh, lenalidomide dexamethasone regimen has been uh, also established as a new on, uh, on standard of care for, for these elderly patients with newly diagnosed. Then colleagues in the US and other parts of the world um, did other studies having lenalidomide on low-dose dexamethasone as a control arm. So this 777 study established VRD as a, as a front of care. So this was an academic study from the US and the study uh, basically showed a, a PFS benefit 
and also a survival benefit in favor of uh, RVD. Uh, and as you can appreciate on the left hand side, in fact, the, ma the majority of these patients uh, uh, got at least partial response for 90% of patients, and approximately 75% of these patients achieved a high quality response, achieved at least very good partial response. So we moved from we moved forward with uh, we had MP thalidomide, we got lenalidomide low dose dexamethasone, and then uh, we got uh, RVD for these uh, older patients with myeloma. Uh, this uh, uh, this is what was shown for as part of this four triple seven study. So the study was not totally dedicated to the elderly. And if you look at uh, what is shown on the left hand side in, in terms of median PFS, so the median PFS was uh, four years for those patients below the age of 65, but let's say only approximately three years for patients over the age of 65. And, and uh, in fact, the survival benefit was observed across both age subgroups. So for patients below and over the age of 65. So what about the retimumab studies? And the first daratimumab study was not based on lenalidomide. So the first daratimumab study, which was called the Alcyon study, was based on VMP. So this was VMP versus daratimumab VMP followed by daratimumab maintenance. So the IFM was not involved in this, this particular study because the IFM background was basically lenalidomide and dexamethasone. But the study, uh, uh, met its primary endpoint of PFS. So this is a nice study showing a clear benefit for daratumumab in combination with VMP followed by daratumumab maintenance. And as you can see, the 30 months PFS was 60% for DVMP patients versus only 28% for VMP patients. And so this uh, regimen has now been approved across uh, several, uh, across many countries. And uh, on, on the, the other study, which was uh, already mentioned by, by Mohamed, is, the, is called the Maya study. And the Maya study is basically an IFM study. So this um, IFM had a, had a lot of centers. So we uh, approximately 45% of patients in the Maya study were in fact French patients. And so again, the design is very, very simple. So this is the and low dose decks. So nothing, uh, in fact, the IFM did not very clever study. So we, we did something very logical. So we moved forward step by step in a, in a let's say, in a, a consistent way. And in a very, uh, um, we, we, that was in fact, uh, simple designs and simple six. They're just uh, the ability to work together quite fast and uh, asking uh, likely some of the good questions with a good timing. So, uh, and again, this study is quite impressive. So this study was part of ASH um, 2018, was part of the late breaking abstract session. Uh, the study was published uh, in the New England Journal. And uh, as you can see that uh, with a population of, uh, uh, with a very elderly population, 44% of patients had an age of 75. Uh, the 30 months PFS was 71% versus 56. Uh, so the, the median PFS has not been reached for DRD, but it is expected to be, uh, let's say, around 50 months, maybe maybe between 50 and 55 months, which is, uh, I would say, which is quite amazing for elderly and very elderly patients with this disease. So the, we, we may, of course, survival is not mature. Uh, what you could say is that we, MPT had median survival of four years, Lenalidomide index on VMP had, had median survival approximately five years. And I would say probably we may expect median survival approximately six years with this DRD regimen. So this is a way to show that in fact, uh, altogether we did progress in myeloma. So this benefit, uh, this PFS benefit was observed across age subgroups. And this was uh, also the case for uh, the DVMP study. So for patients below or over the age of 75. And if you look at response, uh, this is extremely impressive insight. So the, the, as you can see on the left-hand side, 93% uh, of patients achieve at least partial response. Uh, approximately a little bit less than 50% uh, of patients achieve complete response. And 80% of patients achieve at least very good partial response. And going back to uh, looking at this, and. Uh, 
And, uh, and going back to uh, what we said initially with uh, MP or dexamethasone-based regimens, for example, MP had a 30% response rate, approximately, let's say. So we, we moved from 30% response rate to, to more than 90% response rate. So which means that with these new regimens, in fact, uh, virtually all patients will get at least partial response. Many patients will get high quality responses. And if you look at MRD, uh, the MRD negativity at 10 minus 5 was 24% of patients. It, it is a very conservative assessment, I have to say, and, um, and with a longer follow-up, we, we do believe that uh, we will see approximately 30% of patients uh, with MRD negativity at 10 minus 5. And finally, these MRD negative patients do extremely well in both arms, but as you can see, we had 89 patients in the DRD arm versus only 27 in the lenalidomide and dexamethasone arm. So many, much more patients uh, uh, got MRD negativity in the, in the DRD arm. Uh, putting together this response rate, in fact, uh, uh, this is again the DRD regimen. In, in the middle, you have VRD and uh, the VMP regimen uh, shown on the left hand side. And as you can see, uh, this is or less the same, especially for the two daratumumab-based regimens, uh, maybe a little bit less for VRD. And again, these regimens are extremely impressive in terms of achievement of response, including high quality response. So uh, another way to show that we did progress, so the, 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 the goal here is not to do any kind of comparison between uh, the, all of these studies, is to, is to look at median PFS, so you have a uh, the, the first study is the VISTA VMP study, uh, the VMP from the Alcyon study, the DARA VMP, then you have different lenalidomide and low dose dexamethasone regimens. Uh, finally, the lenalidomide and dexamethasone regimen from the BIAS study has a median PFS of 32 months. And then you have the, the VRD and finally the DARA tumumab lenalidomide and dexamethasone. So basically, we move from median PFS uh, approximately. Uh, a little bit less than 20 months to uh, an expected median PFS for DRD uh, had uh, approximately 50 months. So another way to show that uh, we did progress in this disease. So uh, going back to guidelines, and uh, the, these are the, uh, what is shown on the left hand side they are basically the ESMO guidelines 2017 uh, I started with. And I, uh, what is shown on the right hand side are new studies, new regimens. Uh, we, we already mentioned the retumab VMP and the retumab lenalidomide We have ongoing studies investigating ixazomib lenalidomide and dexamethasone. This is also an IFM study, uh, a study investigating lotuzumab lenalidomide and dexamethasone. And also importantly, some studies uh, investigating quad regimens, so four drug combination regimens. Having a, a CD38 antibody, either isatuximab or daratumumab in combination with VRD. But going back to the frailty discussion, in fact, these studies in the middle are studies for fit elderly patients. And I showed you previously uh, uh, at least one example of a study uh, only for frail patients with myeloma. So this difference between the fit and the frail uh, will likely become more and more important in the, in the future. And finally, uh, these regimens will be used as continuous regimen for the majority of them. Uh, uh, in other words, in fact, the patients will stay on a, a combination of PI on image or the combination of an image on a monoclonal antibody, especially a CD38 monoclonal antibody. So all of these studies will lead to additional progress for these elderly patients with myeloma. So this was my final slide. This is the IFM. Uh, thank you again for, for this award. That was a, a very nice surprise, and this is a great honor. Uh, this is a great honor for me. This is a great, uh, this is a good thing for the IFM, as I said before. So thank you very much to the committee, and, uh, and uh, okay, thank you. Have a nice uh, evening.